Hello, my name is Wes Dawson. Welcome back to the channel, Ghost Bustin Wes. Ghost Busting without a G. And here we are, finally. Now, I feel like I've been saying this for weeks. We're actually going to get into the nitty gritty of some of the work on this pack, as opposed to me just flapping my gums for 20 minutes or so. Uh, so today, we're going to take a look at how I mounted my Alice frame. I'll talk a bit about that. Talk a little bit about this pack in general. Uh, uh, this is a Spirit of Halloween pack, uh, pretty much stock as is, uh, that, that you're viewing there, other than the Alice frame mounted to the back side of it. We may be distracted at one point during this video as there's a uh, near 100 pound Irish wolfhound in the room beside me, absolutely terrified of an impending uh, thunderstorm coming. Myself, I'll deal with it, I think I'll, I'll cope, uh, but he's not liking it too much. Uh, myself, personally, I'm trying to dab sweat off my face for this video, but uh, that ain't happening. You're one of the wonders of living up in uh, the beautiful country of Canada, and specifically Quebec, is we have uh, these beautiful summers where it's plus 30 degrees Celsius in the summer uh, with uh, the humidity gets up into the 40s. Love it. It's great. Just feel myself melting on the inside. I love it. And uh, in the winter, we get minus 30. So, hey, you get the best of both worlds, you know? Uh, there's maybe four weeks out of the year. Pristine. All right. So one thing I wanted to mention specifically about this pack was a lot of people, use, I noticed online, I'm pretty new to the ghost busting equipment building prop building kind of thing uh, the world of that um but a lifelong ghostbuster fan uh relatively handy but uh, as i've said in previous videos a lot more a carpenter than uh fine electronics or or plastic you know i bought a rotary tool uh to do some work on uh this uh, pack realized don't spin it full revolutions because you will melt the plastic like a candle uh so you know so it's a learning curve so i felt that there was a bit of a gap between those who are like professional prop builders um, people who have no idea where to start and then gatekeepers just throwing fingers all the way, you know, all the way in the middle. Um, so the Spirit of Halloween pack, for those who aren't aware, who, uh, you know, if you woke up under a rock, because even myself, like I said, I'm new to it, but I knew what the hell the Spirit of Halloween packs are. Uh, they're harder and harder to find because I'm pretty sure Spirit of Halloween, I don't know if they went out of business or they lost their license. They're not making these anymore. Uh, so unless you want to be buying, you know, aftermarket thousand dollar Hasbro packs and then cutting them into pieces and doing stuff to it. Look for one of these. I picked it up on Amazon for like, I think $79. It was on sale at the time. And uh, it stayed unshipped for almost a year. And I was like, I'm not canceling it because I'll never find it again. Finally, they shipped it out. I was lucky enough to get one. Uh, basically, it's just a Halloween prop uh, little proton pack with a really, really dinky little uh, throwing wand on it. But uh, for people who want to experiment, work on it, build it up, it's amazing as a starter pack. If you don't have a 3D printer, if you don't have a bunch of money you want to throw into a pack, uh, even myself, I question now the amount of uh, kits I bought on Etsy and the various things I've, I'm going to be doing to this, the amount of paint I've bought for this and Bondo and stuff. Should have just bought a full kit from Ben Kent or something like that, but here I am, I'm going to have the world's most expensive Spirit Halloween pack by the time I'm done, and I'll be damn proud of it. Um, so basically all it is is a shell. I think, uh, unfortunately, the batteries in my actual pack are dead. Okay, there we go. So this is all it does. Kind of an annoying crackling noise of some lights. That's why, as I mentioned in the last video, I'll be changing out the lights, different pieces, eventually you're swapping out the entire wand. Uh, but it's just a great starting piece. Gives you the main shell. There's a lot of things you can do to it, uh, which I'll go more MSR, you know, I'll do it as, as I go through them. Um, on those various steps of the pack build. Like I'd shown in previous in a previous video, uh, I'm gonna talk about my 3D printer at one point. I just find it's a very useful tool, very useful thing to have. A very good way to waste your time and money. And uh, so, you know, I printed a new shock mount that'll eventually be bolted on there, a bit heavier, a bit beefier than the original one. Uh, I got this nice metallic uh, PLA uh, from everyone, every, everyone. Like I said, I'll, I'll put it in the link. Uh, I'll put the links in the description. And uh, when I get onto those videos, I'll talk about them more specifically. But these things are great. You know, just to beef up uh, the, the, the basic pack that you get. Uh, anyway, so it, a lot of different things you can do to it. I just like the fact it's a bit more accessible. Uh, at the time, I knew nothing about 3D printing. I knew nothing about prop building. So I didn't want to be like, well, I want to you know, spend $1,000 or I want to build everything from scratch. But once telling you once i got started on this thing i want nothing more than to build one from scratch so uh, uh I'll, I'll give this as a warning to anybody getting into this stuff very addictive very addictive 
Um, if you have children, you know, tell them it's last summer you're going to camp, kids, because daddy got some new hobbies and he wants to get them rolling. So um, let's take a look at this thing right now. Oh, yeah. Here, we got my Lego Ecto-1 kind of in the way right now. i got to keep it away from animals and uh, family members with little sticky fingers. Uh, so, yeah, this is what we've got so far. It's not to show this off. I'm impressed so far. Uh, anyone building this, if it's your first time building, you know, some people say Lego, it's, um, it's, it's cathartic, it's, it's, it's relaxing, it's, uh, it's all kinds of different things. Uh, to me, horribly frustrating. I damn near threw the entire thing across my living room. Uh, yeah, obviously the bags are numbered. They didn't mention that some bags have more than one bag. So I was looking through bag one. I opened bag two, bag three. I could not find the piece I needed. And, you know, someone said, well, just continue on. I'm like, well, you can't because it all builds on top of itself. And that relaxing, fun build was turning into me just losing my crap trying to figure out where that little piece was. So uh, anyone who maybe buys the kit, be aware that they say bag one. There could be two bags, so take everything out, take a look what's there, and then, uh, and then get rolling. All right, thanks to the magic of rudimentary video editing, we're back, and now I know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, so the way I did this anyway was I mounted, I realized I'm going to have to cut a bigger hole for my battery pack. Uh, one thing I'll say to anyone building this stuff, plan ahead. Plan ahead. As I realized uh, I wanted to add more to the pack itself, uh, keep in mind where you're placing things that they fit in the pack easily that you can mount the weight to it Like I wouldn't I'm gonna eventually mount all my power speakers anything I can to the motherboard itself So you don't have the weight of anything inside this you'll see once I open it up It's a pretty dinky little thing for a $70 Halloween toy my god, but of course I bought a Captain America shield I think it was $70 as well and it's it's basically like a hardened plastic bag. It's the cheapest thing I've ever seen. Uh, it's not by no means is it the Marvel Legends series thing. It's it's like I said. I I think it's made out of friggin' uh, barba papaya. What's it called? Uh, cotton candy or something. It's it's so damn thin. It's it's ridiculous. Um, anyway, what I did with this thing was the motherboard itself is mounted on four bolts in the corner of the pack, which I'll show you when I open it up. But the frame, the the Alice frame itself, is bolted to. The motherboard so the first thing to do is get the motherboard off take the alice frame off then we're good to go um the alice frame itself had a couple holes on the bottom side of course hidden behind a kidney pad to put bolts and this one here i was uh, checking reference photos and i drilled through that to uh to hold it in place um for anyone getting the stuff too uh there's a facebook a lot of facebook groups uh some of them avoid at all costs others are wonderful uh this one i think it's called the ghostbusters reference library very good if you don't have a bunch of books or stuff lying around or you're too lazy to skim around on google yourself uh they have a lot of regrouped photos of different scenes and different equipment and things like that that'll help you see like about where this is seated because um one thing i should have mentioned easily 10 minutes ago uh is the spirit halloween pack is about 82 percent the size of um a regular proton pack so basically, anytime I print anything, I have to remeasure the size. So here comes Mac the Wolfhound. Let me let me tend to my my gentle giant. Give me a moment. All right. So I'm gonna continue as is. Uh, you see, I got a a big dog here, very very scared of the storm. That's not even really doing anything. Um, so yeah. So this pack, the Spirit Pack, is about 82% roughly. Uh, so like when I printed the booster ladder, which is designed for a full size pack. Uh, you don't want to do too many guess and checks because it takes like a day to print everything. Um, well, as I do everything like, you know, thick infills and highest quality, so my pack will look good. Um, to buy one of these bad boys, I don't remember what they're called. I wanted a, a digital caliper. That's I just remembered. Good thing there's a sticker on the on the front of it. Very useful little tool. Eventually, I will do a workshop episode where I'll show some tools I think are very useful for prop building or for anything like this, especially 3D prints. Uh, you need to be very exact, um, you know, this yellowed old ruler is very useful, but uh, not, not quite for the, the precise measurements that are required. Uh, so basically like this, I would measure the width of the, the, uh, the existing ladder, adjust my print in Cura, print that out, and uh, get some beautiful, perfectly fitted pieces. But uh, I think it's about time. Get into this bad boy, let's do it. All right, so like I was saying, this is uh, like not much done to it. If anything, it's a little bit less than you get from the stock. I took uh, the booster tube off. Um, where's this? This is the original booster tube that came with it. And then I 3D printed one that just has a bit more depth and a bit more shape to it. This is a, obviously the 3D print. 
and I spray painted it with a Krylon like metal tinker paint, which on the, the, the smooth surface, it looks beautiful. Like that, that's just naturally the paint drawing doing that. I was very impressed. It was able to do that. Uh, the only thing is I find with my 3d prints is you can kind of see the geometric shape to them, which I'm not too big on. So I bought Bondo and I guess everything I print, I'm going to have to cover in a nice, nice little layer of Bondo and sand that down. So I took this off the pack from up here. And basically really all I did was ugh, mount this nice little Alice frame on. Uh, this Alice frame I purchased off of Amazon.ca. I uh, keep in mind everything I order is usually off of Amazon.ca unless I feel like paying extra shipping import fees and you know I'm already paying shipping. I don't want to pay it again if it's coming across the border. Don't quite get that. But typically, uh, you know, I am from Canada, so typically I, I order from Amazon.ca. I got this from Rothko uh, at the time. The first one I bought, I think, was $69. Uh, next one was $78, and now I think they're at $90. That's uh, the downfall of having one of your favorite film franchises, you know, rebooting or, or you know, having a, another movie and it doing very well is everything gets very expensive very fast. Uh, it's a great little frame. It is not, if you're planning on, you know, rucksacking, uh, you know, th through the deserts and then and, and some kind of covert mission, I wouldn't buy the Rothko packs off Amazon. I'm pretty sure I could fold that thing into a little ball. It's not the sturdiest thing. It's, it's great for holding like a, a spirit pack and I think even the Hasbro packs, but it certainly is not a, a military grade pack. If it is, my God, we are in trouble. Um, no, so it's a nice little pack. It obviously looks way better than the school bag straps that come with uh, the stock Alice or stock uh, Spirit of Halloween pack. You know, I think it's great, perfect, everything I needed. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though. All right, so while my Alice frames are precariously uh, balancing on the edge of this table, I just wanted to show that uh, I bought these a few months apart. Uh, one was twenty-five dollars more, and a few inches shorter. Uh, this, this, I, I think it was because I'm not quite on the table, so it's not quite as bad as that. It's only about an inch difference. Uh, but keep in mind, for some reason, these new Rothko Alice frames are even smaller than they were originally. Don't know why. It's just how it is sometimes. All right, now as exciting as my narration may be, I think we're going to speed this up to get this thing open. Uh, basically, if you need me to explain how your ratchet works, you've got a lot bigger problems than prop building. Okay, and definitely one thing I think I would do if I was, I want to get a second Spirit of Halloween pack to build like a, a, a obscenely crazy proton pack with as many gauges, pumps, tanks, wires, like just make it like almost insulting to Ghostbuster lore that you would build such a monstrosity. Uh, of course, I can't find another Spirit pack, but if I were to do that, I wouldn't mount it the same way because this I just find uh, it, it puts a lot of wear and tear on the... Uh, the blocks that are holding this in the corner right now. And here we go. Alice frame is up. Let's take a look. All right, so this are the inner workings of the Spirit Pack. Like I was saying, there's not much to it. It's a lot of cheap plastic, barely bolted together. That's why uh, eventually anything you can mount, mount it onto this sheet of MDF. Another thing I will mention, I don't know, maybe any American viewers can confirm this for me. Black MDF. Does this even exist? Is this a pipe dream I was chasing? Every hardware store I went to looking for black MDF, people thought I was, like, as though I'd never looked at a hammer in my life. Never even heard of this stuff. I've never personally seen it, even the years I worked construction. Never seen, a, like, a black MDF where it's actually dyed black, so when you cut it, it remains black. Uh, we said, whatever, I'll take regular MDF and paint it, but just keep that in mind. All right. So now we got her stripped down, ready to go. Uh, basically the way I set this up was I cut a couple pieces in here. I lucked out that I had a random quarter inch piece of wood fit perfectly into the corner. So I just replicated that for the other corner. I was good to go. Uh, I really doubt to be so lucky. What I did was I fit P like I said, I'm used to woodworking. So I fit got the squares in make sure they're nice and flush with the the, the face of the pack uh for the mdf i had showed in a previous episode that initially on a piece of plywood and then later on a quarter inch piece of mdf covered in dog hair uh, <laughs> i cut out a couple uh, uh templates so i had those ready to go basically all i did was if, if you'd like to do this i made it because the spirit pack is 80 percent 
about 80% of the, the full size pack. I didn't want to use quarter inch. I, I used a half inch MDF because I wanted it to look thicker. And I also wanted it to extrude, uh, you can't quite see it with it off, but to extrude past the actual pack itself. So it looks like it's mounted to a plate because it's it's kind of small. It's kind of you know lacking that punch, uh, the spirit packs. So I took a pencil with a, all right, why am I getting a pencil to show anyone who doesn't know what again? You know what a pencil is? You're on the wrong YouTube channel. Get the hell off YouTube. Go to school. You don't want to. All right, anyway. Take a washer. And then I just traced around. I'm going to try and show that a bit closer because no one can really see when it's 10 feet away. Say I had my sheet on and I just traced all the way around. That way, I knew I had at least a little half inch thicker all around the contour of my, um, my shell. Cut that out, and then it's, it's MDF. It's not very hard to cut if you want. Cut it again, make a new sheet. It's you know, 10 bucks, and you can make maybe three out of it. You're good to go. Uh, so I fit those in. Once they're nice and flush, I put my MDF on. I drilled a couple test pilot holes to know where I'm putting these little grommet things. I work construction, but I don't know what the hell these are called. You know, the, I'm not full of, sh I'm not full of crap. I'm just, like, I've, I've been working an office job for, oof. 15 years, 15 years now, I don't know, 20 years maybe. Um, so it been a while, been quite a while. Um, drill my pilot holes, put those in, and then fit the, these basically, then you drill out, the, I think these are quarter inch, show the ones you can see, quarter inch, hammer them in, and then you can actually bolt. So these are what my bolts feed into. Uh, the drawback to these, make sure you drill all the way through the blocks and make sure you buy, I'm gonna call them grommets, I don't know what they're called, that open on the end because if ever you change the width of your motherboard which is what i did they don't fit anymore so i had to take them out put new blocks and drill them out further so if you if you're using a block technique like this drill right through and make sure that your bolt can pass clean through it so that if ever you want to make a thicker uh, motherboard a thinner one you can still get the same bolts and not have to change these blocks out again because uh, they're they're a bit of a son of a gun um and basically, I just hot glued those in temporarily. And then after I put a couple screws to the side, um, I'm not going for screen accurate. So I don't really care if there's screws here or bolts there. If anything, maybe put a bolt head over it. Uh, it's going to be painted black. No one's going to see it. I'm able to look fine. That's basically all there is for mounting it. Is uh, the same thing at the bottom. I just found the most convenient space, which is right here where this like bumper, uh, bumper plate is. Kind of fit uh, blocks there perfectly. And I also wanted to disperse the weight as much as I could. That's about it. There you go. Uh, <laughs> All right. You're going to see where I've edited videos because I'm getting progressively sweatier and it's going to jump back to a couple where I'm like perfectly dry. Um, so the Alice frame itself, I'm not unbolting it because I don't feel like doing that. I don't really need to for the purposes of this demonstration. Uh, basically, all I did was I cut out uh, some little wood pieces here, notch them out in little, uh, little circles. Uh, I have quarter inch bolts with some locking uh, wing nuts, not wing nuts, but like a locking um, washers on them to keep them from coming apart. And these eventually I'm either gonna cut through a, how Canadian is that, cut through a hockey puck to get a nice black rubber piece, or I'll 3D print one. I tried to 3D print one. And just wasted six hours of my life. So I will not be doing that again. That, um, I believe, I don't believe the, the movie packs have buffer space like that, but me, again, it was to give a bit more depth on the pack, make it look a bit beefier, and yeah, so it looked better. So all I did was cut out three pieces. Really cut out the three pieces, bolt in those little circles, and we were good to go. All right, well, that's basically it. There's not much more to show for the, the mounting of the frame itself. I think that's pretty straightforward. I just felt it uh, wasn't mentioned anywhere. Everywhere I looked online, there's no specifics. Uh, but like I said, I think what I'm going to do for this pack eventually and any new ones that I build, use me like an L bracket where it's really metal to metal, uh, maybe put a plate inside the plastic to reinforce it. But uh, the, the, the blocks were good, but the blocks, uh, I said, constantly, you know, you see you're cranking them in, you ratchet them a bit too tight. Every time you do that, you're, you're, you know, you're pushing that grommet in, you're splitting the wood a bit. Um, eventually, they're going to give out. And uh, you don't want that to happen at a convention or, you know, mid-bust or something. And then, hey, then you lose your job. This is serious stuff, people. So, that's all I got for you this week. With one notable exception. More swag, baby! That's right, as I mentioned in last week's episode, or maybe two weeks ago, can't remember. 
the Ghostbusters Ecto-1A from Playmobil has finally arrived. Um, I just want to mention, though, as a little disclaimer, don't think that this is going to become a weekly occurrence of me buying cool stuff and opening it on, on video. Uh, very lucky start to the channel, but ooh, my wallet and, and my, my oof, this, this wave of regret overcoming me is telling me I might be cool in the purchases for a little while, but I'll save this for another episode. I want to talk specifically about Playmobil or Playmobile for those who pronounce things weird um because I, I don't know why you get so much flack online i find they got beautiful series people go, oh, it's for kids yeah and legos for adults like it, it's all plastic junk when you really think about it so i don't know why it gets such a bad rap online i find they got beautiful detailed and pretty film accurate little uh, little kits so we'll take a look at that well, my name is wes dawson thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful journey into how i mounted my owl's frame I don't know my Spirit Halloween pack will have more exciting stuff next week, and uh, we'll go from there. So please like, subscribe. Hell, even if you didn't like it, was it hurt you to subscribe? Do it and just don't follow notifications. Honestly, you'll forget about it. You'll never know, and I will reap the benefits of these sweet, sweet subscribers. So tune in next week, and uh, keep on busting, baby.